you're muted can't hear you yeah i'm around i'm in the valley i'm getting an oil change right now so i kind of timed I, it up so i could be here i heard you were in a car accident it happened yeah yeah it did happen okay. but you're it was okay. beautiful oh i'm fine the police were there there was an eye it was like all set up it was like it was arranged you know it was really mm -hmm. wonderful yeah so i'm good the car still runs just whatever i thought i needed to to be on my way is just um it's really been revealed that like i don't need that you know it's uh released from this kind of self-centered uh place of like you know acting and stuff it's been great yeah <laughs> so jai guru dev <laughs> only a devotee would say they did it in a car accident and it was just great. <laughs> <laughs> i was so stoked i was like whoa i just really felt i felt the love of krishna in my heart during it and i was like this is a miracle to feel this way right now <laughs> so, felt taken care of yeah it was as shintari would say you know you've drunk the kool-aid <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah yeah no doubt no doubt beautiful beautiful well great to see everyone anu, um sulalita's with us dana krishnandrani td robert scarlett govinda is here too somya shah mijai and evie and ireland <clears throat> Hare Krishna, and um, Radhana Rupini, Didi's also just, just tuned in. Well, um, wow, what to say? It's a, it's a glorious day. <clears throat> it's a very, very happy day. Sri Gaur Avir Bhav, divine appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, and uh, I'm here in Hungary. We've had a quiet day today. We had our main festival on on Sunday, because all the devotees here, it's difficult for them to come on the weekday. So we had a we had a very nice gathering on Sunday. We were happy with the turnout. Um, and now today we're having a quiet day of um, observance, which has been has been very nice, actually. You know, it's very it's very healthy sometimes. You know, to not be part of the big crowd, and because you know sometimes when you're in that big crowd. And big events, you you can lose something of the essence of everything, and and um <clears throat> and I was reflecting on our in our discussion on here on Sunday, you know how you know Shri Shridhar he commented that when he when he was he first started associating with the Gaudiya Math, the mission of his Guru Maharaj before it had grown into something big before it had become a thing. There's Jadu Gopal, Dandavad Prabhu. Great to see you. <laughs> um and and how and Shil so Shila Srinamar's comments like he wasn't he wasn't attracted because of some big buildings or big following or anything like that. But it was hearing that sound vibration of our gurus, of his guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. And it was that that sound vibration, that message that was coming through him, you know, that was what attracted him. It was, you know, quite small at that time. And so like having these quiet days of remembrance, they give us a chance to really reflect on, you know, why we're really here and, and you know, what really brought us here, why we're still continuing and so on and so forth. So it has been, it has been very, very healthy for me you know, and trying to follow some level of fasting, <laughs> you know, not, not, you know, full fast, but, you know, I had some banana smoothies <laughs> to keep me going. You know, and and I'm, I'm happy, you know, you know, I'm, I always remember that time that I had a Navadweep, you know, it was, it was such a, no, I, I think it's so healthy for, for every practitioner to to give some solid time and ashram life, you know, it gives us such a firm grounding and something that we can fall back upon, right? Even if we're in a situation where nobody's watching, <laughs> nobody's keeping track of whether you're following or not, you know, but you have that in your blood that, you know, we follow Akadashi, we follow these days and and, and if nothing else, because it's pleasing to our gurus, you know, our, our gurus, they have our best interest at, at heart. And our Gurudev, he, 
he gave this explanation of the word upabas, right? Upa is the Sanskrit word for fasting, right? You know, vas or bas is referring to a residence, to residing. And upa, he said, is derived from the word samipe, which means to be close to the Lord or to be close, right? And so the idea is that by, by, by following, you know, some level of renunciation, like ab abstaining from our own selfish enjoyment, too much engagement with the senses, then we can remember our Lord more, and that will bring us nearer to our Lord. That will give us residence close to our Lord. You know, this is the, the idea behind fasting. And as I said, you know, today is the most glorious day, you know, and, and one of the things I've been reflecting about the most over these last few days is, you know, how this day it's celebrating the victory of devotion and the devotee over everything else. It is, you know, the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's a declaration of the glory of being in the position of a servant, of a devotee. You know, being the being in the position of offering sacrifice, offering service, you know, how high, how dignified that is, you know, that the appearance of Sri Krishna, the supreme absolute truth, you know, as as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is a grand declaration of that. And you know, and this is ultimately the primary fundamental purpose of the Lord's descent. You know, what what to declare the supreme position of his devotee, even over his own self. And we have this beautiful song by Vasudev Ghosh, you know, Jadi Gorna Hoite, Tobeki Hoite, Kemena Doritam De, Radhar Mahima, Premara Sasima, Jagata Janata Ke, where this Vasudev Ghosh is expressing, you know, if Mahaprabhu had not come, you know, how would we know about the glories of Radharani? <laughs> how would we have known about that? How would we how would we be able to maintain our lives? How would without knowing the glories of Radharani, how would we be able to maintain our lives? And Shila Sridamari she points out, and I like to reflect on this a lot, that that this, um, you know, Vasudev Ghosh, the author of this song, he was living perfectly well before. <laughs> but now that he's come in touch with his high ideal, the thought of being separated from it is unbearable. And, and this also, this, we were discussing this idea, I think it was just last week, and Moi Prabhu quoted that wonderful expression of Srila Sridhar right? How our gurus, they are, they are increasing our taste. They're giving us the opportunity to have a higher, more refined taste. And so they are, you know, they're raising the bar, right? And they're improving our capacity to make selection, right? You know, it's, it's, like, it's like if there's some wonderful new flavor, you know, you didn't even know it existed. You didn't know it was an option. Right, and our gurus are revealing, they're revealing this higher, finer world to us. And so, it, you know, when we, I mean, this, like the appearance of the Lord of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's such a, it's such a glorious thing. You know, like you, you could say, like, you can't make this up. Right? You can't, it's just so good and so original. You can't make this stuff up, you know, that the supreme absolute truth you know, he will, he will take the heart in halo, Radha, Baba, Duti, Savoli, Tam, Dalmi, Krishna, Sarupam, right? The supreme absolute truth, the supreme male, the supreme divinity is embracing the heart, the glorious, beautiful, loving heart of his devotee, his supreme worshiper, and her divine, and covering himself, cloaking himself in her divine golden effulgence and and appearing as, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
a few, you know, and exploring her heart, exploring her mood. You know, it's it's a mystery for him. You know, like will you find anything that's more wonderful than this? You know? And a few, a few of our devotees, they told me, Ananta, Ananta Krishna Prabhu, the one of the senior, actually the senior most devotee here in Hungary. And there are other one or two others too mentioned to me that, you know, they were on their journey, they were searching, you know, exploring so many different ideas, conceptions of, of the absolute in the world of religion and spirituality and and you know, trying this out, trying that out, and doing research here and there. But when they came across this conception, then they they knew, you know, Ananta Krishna told me he knew like this is it. It stops here. <laughs> it's not gonna get better than this. You know, it's just not gonna get better than this. So. If somebody had asked me before, or like, what is it that you're looking for? What is it that you would hope for? I wouldn't have been able to say, you know. But now that I've come across this, now my heart knows this is it. It's not going to be possible to top this. You know, it's not going to get better than this. You know? So the Supreme Godhead is searching after himself. <laughs> The supreme divinity is searching after his own self in the mood of his beloved devotee. Sweetness, Shri Srinivas just expresses it like this. Sweetness tasting itself, right? Sweetness exploring his own self. What are the, what are the heights? What are the limits of his glory, his sweetness, his beauty? There, there's this... Um, <clears throat> one of these three principal verses at the beginning of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, which are establishing the ontology behind the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then one of those is Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima, Kidji Shovana Eva Swadvo. And I should look that up actually. Chinmoy Prabhu probably knows it too. But. Um, but where, where you know, there's this expression, right? Krishna's wanting to taste, you know, what is this sweetness within me that I cannot taste, you know? But I can't taste myself. I can't enjoy myself. You know? I can't have a good time with myself. <laughs> so you're all in a better position than me because you can experience how wonderful I am. <laughs> but I can't experience how wonderful I am. You can all be Krishna conscious and experience how wonderful it is, but I can't be Krishna conscious. This is Krishna's situation, right? And so he wants, you know, he wants to be part of the fun. He wants to know what it's like you know, to be a devotee of Krishna. Here's this verse: Shirad Haya Pranaya Mahima. It's so beautiful. This is Srub Damodar's verse. Shirad Haya Pranaya Mahima, Kidjisho Vana Yaiva, Swadyo Yanadbuta, Madurima, Kidjisho Vama Diya, Sokyam Chasya Madanu Bhavata, Kidjisham Veti Lopa, Tadbhavadya Samajani, Shachi Garba Sindo Hadindu. Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love. The Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appeared from the womb of Srimati Shachi Devi, as the moon appeared from the ocean. And you'll see on our altars, and, and I believe this is uniquely something that was established by Shalom, Shidhar Marsh, Shri Bhakti Rakshak, Shidhar Dev Goswami Marsh. Um, you'll see Radharani, she's always in this posture, right, of offering. Oh, I see our Ukrainian sisters also there in, in Ireland. <laughs> Great to see you, Sandavad. Wonderful to see you. So good that you're there. <laughs> um, She's always in this posture of offering, right? And she's holding 
um, a garland, you know, to offer to Sri Krishna. You know, we're we're the devotees are not garlanding her. Right? She's so. You no, know, she is ultimately our our Ishta Devata, right? This is the the view of our gurus that she is our most worshipable deity, right? Radharani. You know, the Radha Dasyam, right? The servitorship of Srimati Radharani that is held as the most high by our Guru Varga. You know, we 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 don't have anything, we don't know anything, we don't feel anything, right? You know, but that's their feeling, that's their understanding, that's their path, their bhajan, and so on. Right. So she is the supreme deity. For those in the Rupa Nuga Sampradaya, right, in this lineage. And yet on our altar, we don't directly garland her, but she's in that posture of garlanding, of serving, right? That's that's a pretty deep point to consider. You know, she's so firmly fixed in that mood of service. That is everything. And we are worshiping that. You know, and this is something that I've been thinking about. It's been coming up again and again when we were in India and then here in our meetings that we are not able to directly worship. We are not able to directly serve, but we are worshiping the worshiper. <laughs> this is our practicing life. We cannot surrender also, but we are trying to surrender to those who are surrendered. Oh. And, and, you know, one point which, which um, came up the other day is that, you know, this is where the importance of, of following the revelation that appears in the heart of a Vaishnava, that's where this comes into so much importance. Because the nature of this higher truth is that you can only know it if you surrender to it. You know, because this truth is is higher than ourselves, right? This truth is categorically of a higher nature than our own being, right? So we, we, can't, we can't know that truth unless we are eligible, unless we reach a certain level of surrender and dedication, we won't be able to fully understand, know, realize, you know, higher levels of truth. No. So that's why the importance of deferring to the Vaishnava of higher realization becomes so important. You know, we, you know, our empiric faculties, you know, our powers of reasoning, our will, our particular worlds of experience may not allow us to know or understand certain layers of higher truth, right? But then are we going to dismiss it because of that? Oh, we, we haven't reached a level of surrender yet that allows us to, to know that, to understand that, to realize that. But this is something that is known and felt in the heart of a higher Vaishnava. So I have to bow to that. I have to defer to that. Dharmasya tattam nihitam guhayam mahajano yenagata sapanta. No, it's very difficult to ascertain what is the true path of dharma what is what is the the true what is the truth what is the path what is religion it's very difficult to ascertain there are so many ways of assessing so many opinions but so how can you really find it it's what's living in the heart of a vaishnava what's hid, hidden in the heart of a vaishnava because they've surrendered to that truth then they can know it <laughs> they've received the grace that enables them to feel that and to know that. So deferring to the higher Vaishnava, surrendering to the surrendered, you know, worshiping the worshiper, you know, this is this is our path, you know, this is our this is our religion. And this is to the extent that the Supreme Lord Himself, you know, He's holding His devotee as above Him. He's celebrating the glory as his devotee. He's confounded. He's bewildered by the love and the heart of his devotee. 
And so he's appearing as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to, to know, know better, <laughs> no, get something of that himself. Right? On, on one level, he's, you know, we're, we're told, and this is also mentioned in these three principal verses in Chaitanya Charitamrita. On one level, Mahaprabhu is coming to perform the function of the Yuga avatar, right? The, the avatar of the age to spread the Yuga Dharma, the religion of the age, to help the people of this world. Right? That's that's on one level. And so he's spreading the Sankirtan movement. He's spreading the, you know, this grand means of deliverance to all souls far and wide. This is his wonderful mission, right? And this, this is one level, right? His his um his public duty. But then he also has his own agenda. You know, he also has his own, Gurudev used some expression, what was it, his tasting matter. You know, he had his own tasting matter that he wanted to explore. You know? and, and then this is also one of the points which is just so wonderful about Krishna consciousness and this whole thing, that there's no ceiling for anyone. There's no... Point, there's no finishing line for, for anyone, even God, you know, which shows you how fresh, how infinite, how dynamic is this? Even God himself is in a, in a, engaged in the search for Sri Krishna, reality, the beautiful, that Krishna Nusandan, Krishna Nusandan, the search for Sri Krishna, even Krishna himself is engaged in that. And he's still reaching new heights, you know, he's still coming across, you know, fresh layers of the truth, exploring what is unknown. So how fresh, how infinite, we can't imagine, actually. Whatever little we know is already so astonishing, so wonderful, so mind-blowing, you know. And the more, the more that we enter into the mood of surrender, sacrifice, more we can set aside our egocentric way of perceiving and navigating with the environment, the more we will come to experience that, the more beauty will come into our lives, the more we will experience beauty in our lives because it is, it is, it is infinite. And Saraswati Thakur, right, he made that comment. He, he talked about, or he not only talked about, but he did publish a daily, you know, newspaper, and 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 he made that because some people express some doubt about the idea, and he made that expression, you know, you know, one one drop of the news of Vaikuntha, right, the infinite world, the spiritual world, that can drown this world. There's so much news. There's so much download coming down. You know, it's so fresh. It's so alive. It's so dynamic. So this is, so, the, you know, we're just skimming the surface, right? We're just skimming the surface here. So how infinite, how fresh is this? Even the supreme divinity himself, you know, he's, he's getting some fresh updates. You know, he's exploring some unknown truth. So this is his private agenda, you know, that he wants to explore that inner heart of Srimati Radharani. He wants to taste something that, that she's tasting and he's unable to taste. And we hear of that occasion when, you know, Krishna, he's, <clears throat> and these are high topics. But we hear that occasion when Krishna, he's, he's carrying Radharani you know, after the, They've performed the rasa dance, you know, this very special dance with the Braja Gopis. And, and then Krishna goes, leaves alone with Srimati Radharani, and he's carrying her for some time. And, and, then, and then he suddenly disappears, right, and leaves her. And she's left in this state of shock and despair and pain, separation. And, 
and we hear how, you know, one of Saraswati Thakur's disciples asked him about this, you know, why, why did Krishna do that? You know, what, what was behind this? And, and Saraswati Thakur, Saraswati Thakur, he's so cent per cent in the mood of service to Radharani. That's his whole identity. And just hearing that question, he became very upset. He became angry. You know, what kind of a question is this? You know, there, what devotion do you find there? You know, what is this is just some idle question, you know, there's no devotion here because he can't tolerate to be reminded of of or hear anything that could possibly be putting his beloved Radharani in a neglected position. She's in the lower position, that she's been neglected by Krishna. That is intolerable for him even to hear. So he's he's very upset even just to hear that question. So what devotion do you find here? What kind of question is this? And he dismisses it. He won't hear it, won't contemplate it. But Srila Sridhar you know, he was there, he was attentive, he heard that and, 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 you know, and he thought there must be some point that will harmonize this. And, and so then later he found in the writings of Bhakti Thakur, he discussed this point, you know, that, and he gave this explanation that, you know, Krishna actually, Krishna deliberately did this because he wants to see, he's curious, right? Her world of devotion is some, it's a big unknown to him. It's something beyond him, he feels. And he wants to see, he wants to observe. He, he disappears, but he's observing from a hidden place. And he wants to see what is this divine feeling that's erupting in her. No, he wants to see that. He wants to observe that. He's very curious. He's bewildered by that. And so he's he's stepping aside to observe her reaction. And so in this way, you know, reading this explanation, Srila Sridhar was able to, again, put Radharani in the supreme position. She's in the higher position. And Krishna wants to see and observe her, you know, like that. And so Mahaprabhu, right, in his, those last, we're told, in the last 12 years of his life, you know, he withdrew from the public society and he's, he's exploring that, you know, what are the inner depths of, of separation, which apparently is, doesn't look so attractive, right, doesn't look so you know, so desirable, you know, there are some very striking descriptions in Chaitanya Charitamrita, right, or, you know, blood oozing from his body and his, his, his limbs are sometimes separating by so many feet and sometimes coming to, sometimes he's contracting like a, like a tortoise and I, there's this. There's there are many descriptions of this in Chaitanya Charitamrita. One of the ones that always strikes me the most. It's very charming when he he goes into the ocean. And and actually, this is another mystery, like how he would get out. Our Gurudev, our Gurudev had a few mysteries that he would like. What do the Paramahamsas muse over in their spare time? <laughs> What do the Paramahamsa Vaishnavas contemplate when they're sitting by the fireplace? <laughs> there were a few things that Srila Kavinamaraj liked to contemplate, mysteries of life, you know. So one of those was how Mahabrabhu could get out of his room because he, he had this small room, the, the Gambira it is known as, and most of you know that place in Jagannath Puri, small room. And it and it's sealed. It's sealed. There's no way that he. And there used to be a guard, because in he when he's in these states of ecstasy, he becomes a danger to his own self. So there's night and day. There's somebody guarding him. You no, know, when when Mahaprabhu earlier on when he goes to Vrindavan, his servant has to take him take him away because Krishna Mahaprabhu is in so much ecstasy. He's 
is a liability to his own, is a danger to his own self, right? So Mahaprabhu is like in this small sealed room space, and he has literally someone guarding him day and night. But somehow, every now and again, he manages to escape. Now, this is during this last 12-year period. So this was something our Gurudev contemplated. You know, what, how did he get out? <laughs> how did he get out, you know? And another another question that he had was um, the, during the Ratha ceremony, right? When they're carrying Lord Jagannath on the chariots, you know, Gurudev mentioned like, okay, we can understand why Mahaprabhu is like joyfully chanting and dancing when they're bringing Lord Jagannath to Gundicha, which represents Rindavan. But why is Mahaprabhu also chanting and dancing when they're bringing him away, when he's leaving? You know? So these are some of the things that Paramahamsa Vaishyas wonder about. You know? And it's nice you know, to know. They're also happy to not know some things. They're okay with that. <laughs> they don't have to know and perfectly understand every little thing. You know? They're cool with that. But one incident in particular, I, I find very charming when he, <clears throat> he did, this is during this last 12 year period when he's, he's, a, he's a pretty much in a constant state of ecstasy and entering heights of divine madness and all kinds of things are going on. And, um, and, and so what, there's this one description where he, he one night, he, he, um, you know, he he disappears in the middle of the night. They realize he's gone, and they don't know how or where. And and um, so the devotees are out, like with lanterns, in the middle of the night, running through the streets of Puri. They go to the and they're on the the beach and the shore of the ocean, and they come across this one uh, fisherman, and the fisherman he he seems mad, right. He seems completely mad. And, 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 and so, you know, the devotees, they, they start to get the idea, oh, you know, we, we, maybe he's picked up something from, you know, he must have come across, you know, our Lord. You know, he got this from somewhere. And, and I think the man thinks he's been possessed by a ghost. Maybe someone else can remember the details more clearly. But, um, and so then but they, they deduce, oh, he's come in contact with she. And he, I think he describes how he collected a big fish from the ocean. Or Jinwei's nodding his head, something like that. And, and, um, and then so they work out, oh, okay, we know what happened. You know, some Mahaprabhu is contagious. Mahaprabhu's divine love is contagious. And so he must have contacted him and, and so, he, oh, so where, where did you see this, you know, big fish, you know, tell us, you know, where did, where, where do you leave him? And, and so they finally find him, find him and, and he's in a, you know, some strange contortion, you know, his body. And I don't remember if he was retracted like a tortoise at that moment or if his limbs had separated him, but it's very, very strange condition. And, and 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 sometimes I don't remember if it's on that occasion, but but sometimes, you know, he's like in this inner trance, and he's like entering the Vrindavan Leela with Krishna and the residents of Vrindavan, and and then he's actually disturbed. Shri Shridharmaj makes this interesting point, right? How, you know, the devotees are trying to rouse him by chanting, but their chanting is actually disturbing. <laughs> You know, the chanting of his intimate associates, you know, Sarup Damodar and others, it's a disturbance to Mahaprabhu. He's in this inner trance in Rindavan Leela. So Srila Srinivas makes this interesting point, like, you know, how, it, you know, and the word used, I think the word used, it's like hunkar, it means like a noise, you know, like, so Srila Srinivas says, like, 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 what if like, Mahaprabhu considers that to be noise? And what's our chanting? You know? How does our chanting qualify? You know? <laughs> Since, you know, sometimes we simple-hearted 
Hare Krishnas, we, we like to try and purify the environment with our chanting. <laughs> purify the flowers and the ether and the insects and the mosquitoes. You know, but, but we should have some, you know, realistic idea of how effective our how potent our, our vibration is. <laughs> and, and, you know, and Mahaprabhu, he's, you know, and then, you know, and there's also comes some, um, what's that expression, like changing of the guard, right? In, in that last period of Mahaprabhu's life in the world, there's this changing of the guard that takes place where, because he's entering into this new mood. And so, for example, Nityananda Prabhu gets dismissed. Nityananda Prabhu doesn't quite fit in. Rasa Bas, right? Mixing, awkward mixing of the relationships, the rasas, the sentiments of divine, different sentiments of divine love. And so Nityananda Prabhu is in the mood of Sakya Vatsalya, right? Friendship, guardian relationship, big brother relationship with Mahaprabhu. And so it doesn't quite fit into this exploration of Madhura Rasa, right? Divine love, the conjugal love relationship. And so Nityananda gets sent away to Bengal. And Subhadamadar, who's Lalita Devi, one of the principal Sakis, girlfriends of Krishna, assistants of Radharani, Ramananda Rai, who's Vishaka, Vishaka Devi, Vishaka Saki, Gadadhar Pandit, who is the leftover, as Srila Sridhar says, you know, after Krishna takes the heart in halo of Radharani, what's remaining, what's left over? Gadadhar Pandit. So who can understand the heart of Mahaprabhu more than Gadadhar Pandit? So these, these devotees, they come more and, you know, kind of closer in the, in connection with Mahaprabhu. And Chandidas, Vijapati, Raya, Nataka, Giti. Gai Shune, this is beautiful verse. Gurudev would chant describing, right, how they would nourish Mahaprabhu and, and support him in these moods, right? They're the girlfriends, they're the assistants of Radharani, maid servants of Krishna and their identity in Krishna Leela. So, you know, they're able to understand his heart, enhance his mood when required, calm him when necessary. And, and so they're, you know, reading, chanting, singing, reciting the verses that are the most appropriate to suit his particular mood, and so on. And particularly, Gradhar Pandit, you know, Gurudev, or Gurudev Shri Govinda Maharaj described him as offering the supreme seva. You know, when when Mahaprabhu is at the experiencing the zenith point of separation. <clears throat> Need this extraordinary verse. You know, we we Goswami Maharaj he tells this story how because you know there's this there's this incident we hear of right when Shula Swami Maharaj Prabhupada and Shula Sridhar Maharaj they they had some very long discussion like three hour discussion right all in Bengali and 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 there were some of Swami Marsh's American disciples present. They don't know what they're talking about. Very curious. And perhaps it was a Chutananda Prabhu who inquired later from Shila Swami Marsh Prabhu, what were you and Shida Marsh discussing? And and Shila Swami Marsh said, Oh, if I were to tell you, you would faint. <laughs> and and so, you know, this this had been kind of like mentioned and this story had carried down and and some devotees are naturally curious, you know, like what what are these topics? What is this subject matter that would make one faint? And and so goes Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaj, he he'd heard about that. And then then on one occasion in the during the 80s, this is years later. 
and he's, you know, developed this relationship with Shula Shudam Maharaj and Shula Govinda Maharaj. And, and so he approached Shula Shudam Maharaj one day, you know, what are, what are some of those, you know, what are one of those things that will make one famous? You know, like, I'd like to know about that. <laughs> and first Shula Shudam Maharaj, he didn't, he didn't quite, you know, make the connection. What's he talking? But Shula Gaur Gurudev, Shula Govinda Maharaj, she could understand. And then, and he explained to Shula Shudam Maharaj. And then they're discussing. And then Shula Govinda Maharaj, he, he suggested, and he said, this Gadadhar Pranam. And, um, and, and so then Shula Shudam, this is an extraordinary verse. This was, Shula Shudam Maharaj, he, um, he had begun this incredible work of, there's a work by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Some of you are familiar with Bhagavad Arka Marichi Mala, I believe it is, where he, he um, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam, 18,000 verses, right? And Bhakti Vinod Thakur distills it down to 1,000 of the principal verses. Arka's light, right? Because in one place, Srimad Bhagavatam is compared to a sun. Right, and you can conceive of these eighteen thousand verses, like ray, sun rays. And so, Bhakti Vinod Thakur in this one text, he's distilling those eighteen thousand rays to one thousand of the principal ones. And and Shri Shudamarsh had contemplated and begun also this work of distilling it further to three hundred verses. And um, and he'd begun that work and. And as a part of that work, he'd also, he composed some introductory verses. And we have a few of them, and they're extraordinary. And one, one of them is this one, which many of you are familiar of, which is this Yadamiya Mahima Shri Bhagavaja Katayam. And it's describing how, how, you know, Radharani's name is not mentioned once, right, in, Shima, in the scripture Srimad Bhagavatam, you won't find Radharani's name directly mentioned, but her lotus feet are running through every syllable. And, and this, there's this phrase, Shama Leela Avalambam. She's the very support of the, of the Leela, the whole Leela of, of Shri Krishna, Shama Sundar Krishna. This is one of the verses, a very beautiful verse. And and then there's another one, which is this Garadhar, this Pranam Mantra, this prayer to Garadhar Pandit, right? One of the most intimate associates of Mahaprabhu. And, and, and in this verse, he's describing this supremely unique service that Garadhar offered to Mahaprabhu in his last days. And um, and so this was the verse that our Gurudev suggested to Shulu. Oh, like this will blow his mind. <laughs> he wants his mind blown right now. So you try this. You know? and so then Shulu Shudamaraj recited this verse and and um, must have given some explanation. And and Gosami Maharaj, he described how he stumbled out of the room. You know, and he. Hearing, hearing that, it was like this higher subjective plane came down upon him, subduing his whole experience of this sensory plane. And he, you know, staggered out, leaning against the wall, you know. Nilam bodhita te saraswabhiraha kshepambitam bandavam shimad bhagavati katamadiraya sanjivaya matiya shimad bhagavatam some words not quite right there, but it's really an extraordinary verse, you know, describing how on the shore of this ocean, Blue, broad, blue ocean and Puri, you know, the Gradhar Pandit, you know, he's 
He's trying Sanjivayan, reviving his beloved friend, right? Chi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's suffering from the pain of Swaviraha, separation from his own self. There are, there are like a number of mind blowing elements in this verse. This is one of them. He's, he's suffering from separation from his own self, right? Krishna in the mood of Radharani, suffering separation from his own self. And, and you know, when, if you see that your beloved friend is suffering from heartbreak, then you may offer them some wine, right? So they can drown their sorrows. And so this analogy is given in this verse that Gradhar Pantit is supplying the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam like wine like this intoxication, to give some relief to his beloved friend in this pain of heartbreak that he's experiencing. And so Gradhar Pandit's reciting, reading from the verses of Bhagavatam, you know, trying to give some relief to his friend. But simultaneously, he's also experiencing, Gradhar is also simultaneously experiencing this intense emotion to observe what his beloved friend is going through. He knows better than anyone what that means, right? So Gradhar is also experiencing this intense emotion. And, and, um, and, and as he, so as he's reading these verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, his tears are falling like flower offerings, doing puja to the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he's, he's, he's literally washing away the letters of, as he's reading, he's literally washing away the letters of, of that text of, of Srimad Bhagavatam. And Goswami Prabhupada, and then may that best of the Goswamis, you know, Gadadhar, may he be my only shelter, may he be my only destination. So this is Srila Srita Marsh's, you know, you know, I've been thinking a lot over these last few weeks and days, you know, like, like what is Sri Jitana Saraswat Mat? You know, we have this beautiful photograph here in our temple space of the the domes, are, many of you know this, this photo, the domes of our Navadip temple. And I've been thinking a lot about you know, these last few days since I came back from India. You know, what is Sri Jitanya Saraswat Mat? You know, and this is what it is, you know, this unique spiritual wealth that you won't find anywhere else. You know, that's you know, why are we here? You know, this this level of revelation. An expression is coming from Shula Shida Maharaj, Shula Bhakti Raksha, Shridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, Shula Bhakti Sundar, Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj. And this is, this is why we're here. You know? This is what we're celebrating. This is what we're following. And, you know, otherwise, you know, we can go to many places and, and you know, follow some generic type of Krishna consciousness or Gaudiya Vaishnavism, but this is some very high level revelation that's coming from the hearts of our gurus. And this is what Sri Chaitanya Saraswamat is. You know, this is who our gurus are. This is what's living in their hearts. And this is what we want to follow. This is what we want to serve, at least. We, we're not able to follow, you know, properly, but we can try to serve it and those who have it, right? There's that very nice verse and it's included in Prapana Jivanamrita, you know, saying, you know, some persons follow this for their religion, other persons follow, that's a jnana valambaka, kechit karma valambaka, Dasam Hari, but you know, some people are following this, some people are following that. Okay, Samya Shamprabhu, so good to see you and great to see the festivities, you know, gearing up there. We feel like we're part of the celebration there. As our Gurudev would say, you know, the sun never sets and Shishina Sari. So Gorpurni was going on all over the world. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
धन्यवाद लिमरिक संग की जाए so this verse our guru dev like this verse you know some people are following paths of knowledge gyan some are following paths of karma ritualistic religious activity but what's our religion you know we we carry the shoes of the devotees of the lord <laughs> that's our religion that's what we do that's what we follow so as shri shridhar says you know we are beggars of the truth right we are beggars of the pure current of truth that is always flowing and wherever we find that we bow our head so where we find that fresh current you know, that is where we want to go that's our religion <laughs> जय श्री भक्ति रक्षक श्री हरदेव गोस्वामी महेश की जय श्री भक्ति सुंदर कृष्ण देव गोस्वामी महेश की जय श्री गौरवीर बाबा बहा महोत्सव अतिथि की जय वेल एम वी डू हैव अ फ्यू मिनट्स लेफ्ट आई लव टू हियर समथिंग फ्रॉम अदर शिनमोई प्रभु एनी इंस्पिरेशन यू लाइक टू शेयर फॉर टुडे आई नो यू आर ऑलवेज ट्यूनिंग इन टू दैट करंट कमिंग फ्रॉम आवर गुरुस Well, what you what you what you're saying really makes me realize the unique nature of Krishna consciousness. Because, you know, contrary to all other religious God-centered religious thoughts, we're saying, "Oh yes, there's God," but we're not worshiping God. <laughs> our worship is going through the servant of God. God's mm. over there. That's great, but our focus is on the servant of the Lord, mm. and that's really really remarkable, actually. And you know highly unique i don't think there's any other religious thought like that mm mm it's a very refined understanding isn't it of how we approach the lord and it's been like that thought has been developed in such a such a clear and detailed way i see scarlet has her hand raised hi krishna thank you for today Uh, my question has somewhat to do with uh, the last time and now can i ask that question i'm um, sure um is it um okay well we can hear the question now and okay. um, we can always so, continue uh, later if we need to yes uh why i said it's uh, somewhat today and somewhat uh, last time uh, it's about the uh, ekadashi Uh, last time i remember you say krishna doesn't need us to fast and it's okay if we don't fast or and so that which i understood uh, i may have understood wrong uh, but uh, today was that we should have fasting because uh, until uh, moonrise sun sun sunrise to moonrise we should have fasting so <laughs> I I I somewhat wonder why we do that then because Krishna doesn't need it you say so why why do we do it then Well I mean you know we you see there are two types of practices of or well, practices the wrong word there are two paths of devotion there are two different types expressions of devotion and one is known as vidhi marg as and one is known as raga marg and raga marg means the expression of of natural automatic spontaneous love for the lord and that is something that is demonstrated by the residents of vrindavan right they have pure hearts and pure love for krishna they don't need to follow any guidelines they're and so i i I, our guru dev like to give the example i like to to follow that they there the members of vrindavan they'll take a bite out of an apple and say oh krishna this tastes so good you please try this you know they just very natural and automatic like you're you would with your best friend because their hearts are so pure they don't have any selfish desire they don't have their own enjoyment their whole existence is for krishna 
every thought, word, and deed, breath, everything they're doing in service to Krishna. So then they have full freedom. They can do whatever they want. But the problem with ourselves is that we, you know, we we're, we're shady characters. You know, we we don't always know what our intentions are. You know, and we're so pervaded by the spirit of selfishness. And so therefore it's safe for us to follow a regulated practicing life where we're following some guidelines. Otherwise, you know, we 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 could go far astray. You know, we could, you know, it's good for us to have some structure, is what I'm saying, that keeps us in a safe position. Because we're still pervaded by the spirit of selfishness. We could go this way, that way, anyway. And so, so Vidhi Marg refers to that devotion, which is regulated by particular rules and guidelines, structures, scriptural um, instructions, and so on. And so, you know, one, one very nice point our Gurudev made is that, maybe Chinmay can remember the exact statement, but it was something like, 90% of the Vedic instruction is based on encouraging a mood of respect and honor. Because before you have love, you have respect, right? Before you have love, you have duty. Really, ideally, we will do the right thing out of a spirit of love. But before we have that, we have duty, we have honor. So we, we're not able to serve Krishna out of a mood of pure love. So it, right now, because our hearts are not clean. So therefore, we are encouraged at least to develop a mood of honor and respect. And from that, love can develop. And so fasting is a way for us to honor the Lord. You know? And so the tradition is that we, we fast until the time of the Lord's appearance. And so in cases where the Lord appears at noon, like Ramachandra, also, Shimati Radharani, you know, they appear around noontime. And so we're fasting till noon. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in the evening around the time of the, the sunset, right? Twilight. So we're fasting till that time. Krishna appears at midnight. <laughs> so mm. we're fasting till midnight. So that's the idea. We're like in this mood. We're waiting for the Lord to appear. We're honoring the Lord by abstaining from our own enjoyment. And then after he has appeared, you know, then with some increased enhanced appreciation, you know, then we will break our fast. You know, this is the, this is the idea. Does that I, make I, sense? Yes, yes. I, um, since I come to uh, Krishna consciousness in, in, in the movement, um, I have done fasting, all of them. And when you say that, then I thought, oh, wow, did I did do a mistake? Was it wrong to do it? Did, did I offend some, something? You know what I mean? I thought it was very bad I did it. That's why I'm asking now that uh, mm. it, because uh, it, for me, I'm not looking for something. I'm not looking for material things. I'm too old for that. I'm just doing it out of respect. That mm -hmm. it says that you have to fast then I do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And somewhat hope maybe it will purify me also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have that wish. Of course I have it. But not I'm not I'm not looking for uh, eternal life. I I'm not looking for money. I, I'm not looking for anything. I just do it as of respect. And if if I get purified by it, so be it. I will I'm tired I'm grateful for it mm -hmm. so it's okay that I, we we fast right yes that's a good that's a good mood you know that's a good mood and it's okay. a good beginning right we have to begin somewhere okay mm -hmm. so, okay thank you okay scarlet <laughs> always happy to hear your sincere questions Jinmoy Prabhu please you have something to add I, I also think like fasting in particular, it's a good, it's a great way to remember the Lord because it's so unnatural kind of to fast for us. <laughs> like then you think, you know, oh, I'm going to eat something. Wait, why am I not eating? I'm fasting mm -hmm. for Gorpanim. I'm fasting for the Lord. 
Hmm. Well, it's also a very nice hmm. way to remember the Lord. All these Vidi Marga hmm. practices. Hmm. I, I love I love that, and uh, that happened to me today. <laughs> It feels very relevant for me. It's that's a really good point. Like you check your like, oh, I'm hungry, but you check yourself. Oh no, I'm honoring the Lord, and you're remembering. And yeah, I, I love that. That's a really good point. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. All right, we have a James Zirate who joined us today. Who's who's that? Do you want to say hello? Uh Oh, acá el Yamuna, Yamuna Jivan. Oh, Jamuna Jivan from Mexico, right? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, nice to see you. Tanda, tanda, uh, Adi, I'm very happy. Which part of Mexico are you in? I'm in Guanajuato City. Okay, okay. Um, like in the, in the center, more or less. Okay, we're well, very happy to have you with us, Ruth. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for your wonderful association. And uh, happy we can be together on this auspicious day. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to share something. Spoke too high above my grade. But um, hope, hope I'll be okay. <laughs> Won't be struck by lightning. <laughs> remember to pray for Nityananda Prabhu's mercy you know it's a special day you know be excused <laughs> all right Jayesh Laguru Dev have a beautiful week everyone and thank you for your association Jai Vishaka Devi Dasi Ki Jai thank you very much for today um, thank you all yeah.